Time. Hello friends, my name is Frank Law and I've been a barista now for 13 years and the last time I competed on the stage was back in 2014, almost 10 years ago. I know, I'm a dinosaur. Now, a lot has changed during this time in both my career and in our industry. But the one thing I've seen consistently throughout my journey as a barista is the exponential speed at which coffee is transforming. That's precisely what I'll be focusing on today, metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a dramatic transformation in form or nature. For our journey today, let's discover how coffee transforms dramatically in taste and experience. You see, transformation is happening in every stage of the coffee story. First, we see producers working to transform a seedling into a cherry, imparting incredible potential to each seed. Next, we see roasters working to transform an insoluble, relatively flavorless substance into a soluble and aromatic coffee. And lastly, we here on the barista level work to transform these story-filled beans into a beverage to be imbibed and enjoyed by our customers. Now, just like how a caterpillar stuck to the ground and earth around it undergoes metamorphosis to become a stunning and beautiful butterfly that flies around the world to wherever it pleases, we too can experience metamorphosis in coffee. The coffee I'll be using today is the Geisha variety from Finca Juan Martin. And I chose this coffee because it's a great example of metamorphosis through the hands of producers. The cherries are first picked at optimal ripeness at the farm, located 20, 50 meters above sea level in Cauca, Colombia. And they're, they're processed as naturals by hermetically sealing the cherries in tanks during transportation to the processing facility at Manos Juntas. They're kept in these anaerobic conditions for 24 hours. Then they're cleaned, sorted, and spread out on drying beds in a solar dryer controlled by compressed air bringing the relative humidity down from 70 to 30%. Now, as you know, this is all done to achieve a desired flavor profile. These steps introduce a new layer of transformation and show how one little change in environment can result in drastic changes in the cup, which in the case for the geisha variety is to call out its inherent florality and complex fruitiness. Now, with that knowledge in mind, I'm extracting this coffee at 18 grams in, 46 grams out, for 23 seconds, capturing this perfectly. This extraction lended well for this coffee because it spaced out the sweetness and acidity and highlighted florality, limiting astringency in the finish. For these reasons, judges, I want you to write down the tasting notes for today's espresso. You're gonna experience blood orange, tart cherry, orange blossom, and cacao nibs, the tactile, is light to medium in weight, silky mouthfeel, and a lingering pleasant finish. Now I'm gonna hand you these espressos. Please evaluate the crema, but hold off on tasting. I'm gonna be introducing a new layer to this course. All right, now once again, please evaluate the crema, but hold off on tasting. Thank you so much. Now I'm covering your espressos with these lids, which is gonna help cool down the espresso slowly over time, preserving the delicate florals in your cups. And also giving me a chance to talk about the coffee a little bit more. Now as a roaster, I had the opportunity to transform this coffee and showcase the flavors the team at Manos Juntas worked so hard to produce. I dropped this coffee at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for nine and a half minutes, focusing on developing the coffees during the Meyer phase and gently gliding into first crack as to bring out the juiciness and florality of this coffee, specifically to a development time ratio of 13%, which I thought really captured a beautiful balance of this coffee. During this period, coffee is undergoing a range of chemical and physical transformations, developing new flavors and aromas. So the decisions I'd made during this period were vital to the transformation of this coffee, which I'm looking forward to you experiencing very, very soon. Now, as I come around, and remove your lids for you. 
I want you to go in with your nose immediately and smell the aroma that's coming from the cup. You're going to be greeting. You're going to be greeted with a lovely floral bouquet. Then I want you to go ahead and take your spoons and stir it back and forth six times like a paddle. And you're going to experience the metamorphosis of this coffee up to this point. Please place your spoons in these spent cups, uh, in these cups provided for you. And please refer to your cards for your notes for today's course and the rest of the courses coming through. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give it up for those espressos. Now, we also see metamorphosis in coffee through the marriage of espresso and milk. And it starts with the milk I'm using. I'm calling it freeze distilled evaporating milk. Let me explain. I first took whole organic milk and freezed it and freeze distilled it down to 50% of its weight, which resulted in a creamier, sweeter milk. But I wanted something more. I wanted a deeper, caramelized sweetness to pair with the high acidity and florality of this geisha coffee. So, in the spirit of transformation, I evaporated the milk by simmering it for 25 minutes at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Caramelizing the sugars present in the milk and pushing forth a deeper caramelized sweetness. Now, this was the milk I was looking for to help transform these cappuccinos. I found that this was best expressed at an attraction of 19 grams in, 26 grams out for 20 seconds, perfectly marrying the decadent milk with this extra, uh, concentrated style of extraction. In your cappuccinos today, you will experience cheesecake, salted caramel, buttery shortcake, shortbread, sorry, and white chocolate. Texture is rich, it's pillowy, has a coating finish like milkshake. Now when coffees are roasted, it undergoes metamorphosis from a green coffee with untapped potential into a substance that is full of complexity and flavor compounds. I believe as roasters, our job is to capture and present these coffees at their optimal stage. You see, this is especially true for me. Believe it or not, I'm actually allergic to green coffee. I have a sensitivity that causes an allergic reaction, such as sneezing, itchy eyes, skin rash. It's terrible. I have to take medicine before I roast every single time. Specifically, there's a protein found in green coffee called alpha amylase inhibitor 1. And this protein is found in the outermost layer of green coffee, which helps protect the seed from insects and, and, and pests. Unfortunately, it also protects it from me. However, when coffee is roasted above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, this protein's enzymatic activity is inactivated, denaturing and transforming into something that I can consume and enjoy. You see, judges, without this transformation, through the application of heat, I wouldn't be able to do what I love, which is taste and enjoy coffee and share this cappuccino with you today. So thank you so much. Enjoy.
Let's have a round of applause for those milk beverages. Now I want to bring it back to transformation for the signature beverage course and show how we as baristas are the final agents through the choices we make to create a unique tasting experience with the goal to enhance and evolve. Spread its wings, if you will. For that reason, I am calling this drink Nabia, which is Korean for butterfly. The first ingredient is the star of the show, the Finca Juan Martin I pulled earlier, but add a longer extraction of 18 grams in, 56 grams out, which will serve as a perfect canvas for the rest of the ingredients. I chilled it through this hyperchiller to cool it down, but to also heighten the acidity and increase the viscosity. Next, I'm adding three grams of this lacto-fermented strawberry juice, which I made by adding one part strawberry to 2% salt. and let it ferment at room temperature for five days. This resulted in a concentrated strawberry flavor where just a little bit goes a long way. I chose strawberry because it has a vibrant acidity that really matched with this Geisha espresso. And this ingredient exhibits the transformation to producers enacted onto this coffee through their use of fermentation and processing. And it transforms that flavor of blood orange to a new white grapefruit. Next, I'm adding 20 grams of a toasted coconut simple syrup, which I made by sous vide the two ingredients together for two hours at 145 degrees Fahrenheit. This resulted in a deep, tropical, toasted, nutty sweetness that added a really nice grounded sweetness to this beverage. And this ingredient exhibits the transformation I've made from a barista to a roaster taking coffee in its raw form and applying heat to transform it through the process. And this ingredient transforms that flavor of orange blossom and cacao nib to a new lemon lime soda. And lastly, I'm adding 30 grams of a clarified floral geisha honey milk punch, which I made by adding 150 grams of milk to 150 grams of lemon and yuzu juice, which helps separate the curds from the whey. The cool thing about curds is they act as a filter to help draw pigments and tannin. To add florality, I added two ounces of an, uh, two cups of an oolong tea, and as a balancing agent, I added two ounces of a floral honey from Kauai. After filtering it through 20 grams of the spent coffee grounds of this geisha, it transformed into a clear but complex concoction, adding a refreshing complexity to this beverage. And this ingredient represents the transformation I've made from a barista to a now more complex position as a business owner, and it transforms that flavor of tart cherry into a new peach sugar. Now, just as the cherries were hermetically sealed, I'm sealing all the ingredients into this blender and blending it for five seconds, further transforming this beverage and creating a velvety texture to your drinking experience. As the last touch, now you'll notice this drink come together with, these ingredients come together with this espresso specifically great synergy and transforming you to bring you new flavors of peach yogurt, lemon lime soda, and white grapefruit. Now, this is the last touch. I'm adding two spritz of this oleosaccharum spray. It's just gonna help add a citrus element, to help lift up the flavors. So the question is, why does this all matter? Well, 13 years ago, I was just a baby barista, and now I'm a business owner. And all the experience and knowledge I've gained during this time is also reflected in the hands that have come together to bring out the highest, most intrinsic qualities of this coffee and to truly make the sky our limit. You guys, coffee is transformative. Say it with me. Coffee is transformative. Thank you so much for your time, and let's fly together. Time. Let's get a round of applause.